Hello and welcome to Marketing Speak. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer, and today I'm very, very excited to have Harsh Agrawal with us. Harsh is an amazing guy. I met him at Affiliate Summit uh, years ago, and we've been friends ever since. We've seen each other at so many conferences. I've been to his home in Gurugram, India. Harsh has started his career in 2008 as an accidental blogger, and he became the biggest professional blogger of India. And, and that's not an understatement. He's also an international speaker. When he's not blogging, he's traveling to adventurous places like Antarctica, Africa, or he might even be practicing Vipassana meditation. Harsh, it's so great to have you on the show. Thank you, Stefan. It's so it's always amazing to connect with you. And yeah, it's so lovely to see you after many years. Yes, yeah, well, it has been a while. And I, I miss you, brother. Yeah, same here. Uh, and it's just just so people. I mean, I got to know a moment back. Uh, you got you became a parent. I became a parent. Almost almost the similar time. So many congratulations to you. Yes, for that. and to you too. And you too. And before Thank we you. started recording, I I made uh, a recommendation to you to check out the course How to Multiply Your Baby's Intelligence. And uh, even though. Uh, our babies are toddlers, actually. <laughs> this content and, and, and these modalities still apply for teaching your kid math and reading and foreign languages, all sorts of stuff. It's really quite amazing. And the interview I pointed you to, I'll share right now with my listeners here, is the Janet Doman episode on Get Yourself Optimized on my other podcast. And uh, that that's a fantastic introduction to this framework on how to multiply your baby's intelligence. I took the 40 hour course from the Institute's uh, uh, advancement of human potential, but this gives you a good starting point. Just listening to the interview, it was uh, episode 303 on get yourself optimized. Okay. So let's, let's start by uh, going a bit into this idea of blogging as a career slash income stream. How did that come about? It's apparently an accident <laughs> for you, but I want to hear the origin story. I want our listener to hear that and how that then morphed into a very lucrative business for yourself. Sure. Yeah. This is my favorite part, you know, like the inception of inception. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> So I've always been, you know, a guy who likes to write about, who who's enjoys writing and sharing stuff. And it was in 2008 when I graduated from engineering. You know, I was working and then I uh, learned about this idea about blogging. And I was quite techy and I was somebody who likes to dig deep and find out, you know, how to or hack a solution around a problem. This is what I used to enjoy. And then I started writing about tech stuff on my blog and people used to love it. Now, this is where I also discovered that blogging is becoming a mainstream thing, uh, you know, all over the world. I mean, still at a nascent stage, uh, there was, uh, and that's where I discovered about Google AdSense and affiliate marketing. And the life, you know, the internet life that I was aware of was changed overnight. I was like, hey, you know, we are not supposed to work nine to six throughout the life. We can actually do something that we are passionate about and make make the same or more amount of money that we would do in the job. And that's where I changed, made my mission that, hey, whatever I am doing, and I started making good amount of money by in, you know, next three to four months. And I made this mission that I would help others to discover this area of living a life where they can follow their own passion and make money from it. And that's where Shout Me Loud, my main blog, my first blog, moved from a tech blog to a blog which teaches people about becoming their own boss. And I was, I think, uh, the biggest uh, differentiator or the, the the difference that we were bringing to the society was being transparent. Like, you know, I was started with nothing. I was probably making $300, $400 initially. And I was very open and on, honest about how we were doing what our income sources were, was what our uh, expenses were so that people can see how they can actually uh, follow the blogging journey to repeat something which I was doing and that's where Shout Me Lot was born and things started. Yes and so you started blogging 
in English, right? And not Hindi, even yes. though you were targeting an Indian audience. Or were um, you targeting more an international audience? To be honest, the the concept of target audience was not there. I was okay. just writing about <laughs> anything that, that was coming to my mind, like you know, tech stuff or how to do blogging or how to grow your blog. And I think it was universal. We for in fact until 2015 we had more users from US and UK combined than in India. And it was in 2015-16 when the in, in, internet penetration increased in India. That's where we started seeing a great influx of Indian audience. Right. And you chose to target, well, I guess, well, not chose, but you ended up inadvertently targeting the U.S. and U.K. because you were writing in English. And I guess you probably chose to write in English in part because the payouts from Google AdSense would be higher for U.S. keywords than it would be for uh, Hindi keywords. Is, is that right? Or you just prefer to write in English because you just like writing in English? Yeah, I mean, I, I was I studied English in my college, my school days. Uh, for, the, for, the, for all the listeners, English is not my first language, so pardon me for my silly errors or mistakes. But yeah, uh, it was an exciting language to learn and to, you know, write up to write in. And especially I can speak to more people from different walks of the life, from different uh, genre uh, and different part of the world. English was one language, so I chose that language to communicate my f learnings. Wow, that was quite fortunate because if you would have chosen Hindi, your payouts from AdSense would have been a lot less because the... Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just the way it works. And, and for, true, that's true. Yeah, wow. It, it's pretty amazing uh, story that you did something that would stretch you and, and that you would enjoy and it was able to sustain you. And how long did it take before it uh, generated more money than you, you could have possibly imagined? Yeah. Uh, so one thing before that, before I get to that that part, you know, like I think like it was seven, eight months of my blogging. That's where I had to decide if I would join uh, the company where I was placed as an engineer, I was, I was placed in this company called Accenture, which is an international MNC, uh, very popular. So I had to decide between joining Accenture or continuing with blogging. And that's where the accidental blogger come into, part come into the picture. Even though I have made my mind that like, you know, I will continue with blogging, uh, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, an accident happened. And it was a bad accident. I was on bed for six months. I had this multiple fracture on my left feet. And doctor said, I may not be able to walk. It's called Lis Frank fracture for the, you know, uh, for the doctors out there. Um, so, and, and that actually paved the way for me into the world of professional blogging. Because even though I, I would have selected blogging as my career, there was still an iota of doubt that I might take that white label job because of the comfort or because that's what been suggested by a lot of people around me. So uh, the one thing which I learned from there, always take advice from the people who have walked into the shoes where you're planning to walk. From right, there. right, because they've seen the road ahead. You know, another uh, truism, a great um, uh, adage is that leap and a nut will appear. I like to add a corollary to that, which is in if you don't leap, then you'll end up getting pushed off the cliff. The, the net will appear as you're uh, <laughs> on your way down, but it, it was almost like the universe had to give you a bit of a push off of the cliff to make you uh, fully commit to become that that uh, blogger as as a career and as as a business person. Yeah, that it sounds like something like that happened actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. how long did it now, take get... for you to fully recover so that you could? just walk normally and, and, and everything. Was it not just the six months of bed rest, but then an, another year of uh, rehab uh, or, or um, you know, additional healing? What, what happened after? Yes, yeah, six months of uh, bed rest and then six months or about eight months of you know uh, physiotherapy. Yeah. And then I was doing okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, well, I'm glad you're, you're recovered. Uh, I had no idea that you had that bad accident Actually, and um, I'm surprised I don't know that because I should know that. But um, I, I, I appreciate no, you no, sharing you do. that. Yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah. then, 
you fully recovered. What, what do you do differently to make this a, a, a big business and how does this uh, change your your whole life? Yeah, so I had an aha moment in between, you know, like when I was I was very angry because of this accident and, you know, just the idea that I would not be able to walk for probably throughout my life. I mean, this idea was, I, I don't think I was taking it lightly or I was taking it, uh, I was going easy on me and I was very angry. I was angry with myself. I was angry with people around me, you know, uh, probably my parents because uh, I was hoping that I, they might consult a better doctor or something. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was not wanted to be in that position, that situation. But then the, I think after two, three days, I saw my parents crying um, and I literally saw them crying. And that was the moment I was like, damn, you know, this is not right because of me. They are crying. And hey, I'm not the only one with the problem in the world. There are many more people in the world who have bigger problem than me. I'm still lucky to be getting all this medical help, all this uh, treatment and you know things might get better for me and that was the ch- moment that re- I realized that hey I can be I can be better than this and people should not be getting hurt or you know feeling sad because of me and that's where I determined to ch- take you know complete control of my action and for the next six months when I was in bed I fully committed myself to this process of learning and sharing everything about blogging so and and that was a big aha moment for for my entire career. Wow, that's profound. So it's uh, yeah, it, it's a responsibility that you you realize that um, I'm not just responsible for my own uh, emotional state, but my my actions impact everyone around me, and especially your parents. So I'm curious now, what was the turning point where you realized, wow, I am making more money than I have ever dreamed of? You know, honestly, money was never a parameter for me for anything, because I think I'm I'm born in a very nice, you know, uh, upper middle class family, which is so, and we, we have been taught, uh, I've been raised in a very different way when it comes to money. So that I was probably making $100 as my first job uh, as, at a call center, okay, which was before I could join Accenture. And I was very happy. I was a happy man then. I'm the same happy man now. So the money never changed anything for me. The only thing which I look forward was that whatever money that I'm making this month, the next month I wanted to make much more than that with my action, with my activity. And if I do that within 20 days, I would rather enjoy the next 10 days you know, going out with friends and spending more time, and this, and I've been playing this game for too long. I think I, I do, I still play the same game. Uh, but if I have to quantify the question, the answer which you are asking, uh, it would be two years or three years. By then, I think I was sitting at a very comfy space. Uh, it was, I think I was 32 when I felt I became a financial independent or financially free, where even if I don't work. Uh, you know, I would be live a very happy and happy life. Right. I could sustain my lifestyle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there, there are multiple points in life that you can uh, achieve different levels of financial freedom. There's financial independence. There's the ultimate financial freedom. There's uh, financially secure. You know, these these are uh, great points to hit, and they're different. And it sounds like you've hit essentially a complete financial independence, not just financial security. Or actually, no, I'd say financial freedom. Because if you don't have to ever work again, and if you quit now, you have enough of a of a nest egg that supports you and your family for the rest of your life. Uh, yeah, that's financial freedom. You can do whatever you want for the rest of your life. It's it's uh, it's amazing. What would be financial independence? Independence is like you, uh, you're dependent on your own. Is that? Financial independence, uh, that definition, I'm getting these uh, from Tony Robbins. I learned these distinctions in Business Mastery or one of his, his programs. I, I did three years of, of a Platinum Partnership and followed him all around, did all these events. 
but it was a while ago. <laughs> Last event was 2013. And so I'm kind of remembering from the d deep recesses of, in my mind here. So bear with me. I think financial independence is where you feel like uh, you could change careers. You could do uh, something completely different, start a business or something like that if you were in the career track of, let's say, Accenture. And that gives you a sense of uh, uh, independence from a particular employer or particular uh, industry or anything like that. Whereas complete financial freedom is a level above that where you don't ever have to work again, ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it seems like that. Like everything becomes just a number in, in the bank account after a while. Like, you know, yeah. you, you basically look for a better meaning and make a bit, better difference, bigger difference in the life of others. Like, yeah. That's what happens next. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I want to touch on that. And, and But uh, first, let's get into some affiliate marketing uh, goodness here. How do you up level your abilities so that you can make more money month after month and not just rely on increasing uh, numbers of people uh, getting on the internet or finding your website. You, you're doing things to up level and, and increase traffic and increase your payouts and so forth. Where are you learning? How are you learning? Uh, wh wh what, what does a typical month look like of, of uh, developing those affiliate marketing and professional blogging skills? Okay. Yeah. So I think it, it's a lot of layers which happened since 2008 because the, back then there was no such material which was teaching you in depth about affiliate marketing or there were limited material if I, if I have to quantify it. Uh, so a lot of this was self-discovery in terms of which plugin to use, which technique to use, how to SEO optimize the content. Uh, but some of the takeaways which a lot of, uh, which a lot of our listeners can take away is uh, no one work with SaaS products or the subscription kind of products. Uh, second, your job is not to promote any kind of products, which a lot of people do if they are in the PPC kind of affiliate marketing. I'm mostly into SEO sort of affiliate marketing where I create high quality content which cannot be replicated or which can be replicated. Of course, everything can be replicated, but, you, but which cannot be created by everyone, uh, which requires a lot of expertise, experience, and the most important part, I, do, I don't do extensive keyword research. I create content which I know would become popular in the days to come. Of course, not all of them are going to be 100% hit, but then a majority of them become became the content that people are searching for, and they stay, stick on the first page for a really long time. Uh, yeah, uh, so so the way I see is like, you know, a lot of, a lot of my strategy goes toward finding or identifying new products or new companies that I believe are going to sustain for years to come. They are not those products which are, you know, which will open their, shut down their shop the next day or, you know, in a few days, but only high quality products with real mission, real vision, with real uh, in-depth work from their part where, and interestingly, a lot of time I promote products even though they don't have an affiliate pro program. For example, uh, the one company which we both know, SEMrush, I've, I've been promoting them since 2009 when they were not, they were very new. Uh, and for the three or four years, they were not sending me any paycheck, but I was still promoting them because the because what they were doing was making us uh, making a great difference. But here's the trick from the, you might ask that, Harsh, okay, but this is not good business, you know, like, hey, the, but here's the thing, a lot of time when you actually promote a good product and you see that this product would grow, sooner or later they would add or integrate an affiliate program and since as a free product and people don't like free product, in fact, people don't like to talk about free product and when I say people, I'm talking about creators. People, creators mostly focus on products which are sponsored or making them good money. And of course, there there are certain people or a um, good number of people who do promote free products just to just to give my you know a gratitude to those people who are doing it. Uh, but the, the trick here is if you are into promoting a product which is already good and which is growing eventually sooner or later, they will add an affiliate program. And the moment they do it, 
your uh, your bank will start getting the number that you would have never imagined so so that's so that is what another trick that one could follow and of course you don't you know you have you don't have to put all your eggs in one basket you have to put it in multiple basket like multiple products and yeah diversified that. streams of income yep yep and, and um someone comes to mind in and one of their principles and and that's my friend Jay Abraham and what he teaches is the principle of preeminence, among other principles. He's uh, a wealth of, of wisdom, but this pr principle in particular comes to mind when you're talking because it's about being a resource for a trusted resource for your prospect, even if you're not going to get the deal, get any revenue from, uh, from them, you are sending them to the most appropriate resource vendor uh, provider regardless of whether it um, helps you financially or not so you might end up sending this prospect to your direct competitor and not getting any money from it but that is preeminence and that gets you a lot of business karma it's really a, a, a not only a a beautiful thing it's a smart thing to do because it really does uh, pay out in the end and uh, you're a, a living example of that i think that's awesome thank you yeah that makes sense i mean uh, i actually imagine a lot of good things that has happened to my life is because of the good karma or the people who have remembered me in their prayers because of the value they got from shout me loud which has helped them change their life for good yeah awesome and incidentally, the Jay Abraham episode of this podcast is phenomenal. <laughs> and I have an interview uh, more recently of him where we got very metaphysical and, uh, and, and philosophical. So that was a really interesting interview. He answered questions he'd, he'd never been asked before in an interview. So uh, listener, check out both of those. Okay, so how did you end up coming up with the name Shout Me Loud for your blog because that's an unusual sounding name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I think I'm a pretty sh shy guy when it comes to, you know, like doing something, uh, meeting people or sharing my thoughts, which is very, uh, which sometimes I, I f uh, and I found expression when I'm writing and this is where I was thinking of a brandable name that I could use rather than using something like blogging xyz.com. Um, and I, I was just thinking of name. I mean, for the two days, the, the idea of discovering the name was on my mind and I was, you know, traveling and I saw this board saying shout and I was like, okay, that's a beautiful name, shout. I picked that word, then the word me loud came from somewhere, you know, probably while taking shower and that's where shout me loud came into existence. Awesome. Yeah, well, it's definitely a remarkable name. It's 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 memorable. It stands out. There's there's something about it that that really um, shouts at you, and I I really like that. And it yeah, it's something that definitely differentiates you from uh, blogging for profit dot whatever and and all those similar sounding uh, websites. So that's that was a a great choice. Now, what are some of the things that you do to give back? Because I, I know you mentioned earlier in this conversation that you, you like uh, helping people with all the additional um, money that you have because uh, the, the, the more you have, the more responsibility to help others. So what, what are you up to? So number one, I don't have surplus money or additional money. Uh, those are good to have. To have. <laughs> uh, for, and I believe everyone will agree to that. There's never enough because there's so much you can do if you if you have enough or more. So yeah, uh, I've started funding education for children. Uh, the plan is to fund education of 400 children, where I would be picking children based on their you know current like. Uh, People who are deserving but less fortunate, help them 
uh, get, get the right education. And that's what I want to start with. I, I did discuss this idea with some of my entrepreneur friend and I'm so happy to share. Like, you know, this idea is going to happen soon and a lot of them are going to participate. So that's something which is on the top of my head because I believe one educated person can make a big difference in the entire society. So that would be my way of contributing back. That's awesome. That sounds uh, somewhat similar to uh, what I'm up to uh, with, I'm on the, uh, the board of Impact Network and they build and operate schools in rural Zambia. And I've been on their board for maybe five or six years, maybe longer, I can't remember. But yeah, the first uh, uh, the, the first time I, I learned of this organization, 2011, I met the co-founder, um, uh, Dan, which incidentally I've, uh, I've had uh, him on my, my podcast, uh, my other podcast uh, as well. Yeah, so that's a fascinating episode with Dan Sutera, episode number 76 on Get Yourself Optimized. And so... Yeah, it's really it brings me a lot of joy and and fulfillment to help people, help y- young people uh, learn how to read and how to do skills, learn learned skills where they wouldn't have the opportunity to go to school any other way because they'd have to carry water or um, help uh, till the the land or whatever instead of going to school because it'd be so far away to go to school they'd have to spend hours getting to a, a school so build a school in, in in that village and now dozens and dozens of kids potentially can uh, learn in, in school so that's one and the other one that uh, is um, coming to mind that I I help fund is uh, Marici or Marici M-A-R-I-C-I. And what they do is um, they rescue children from slavery in India and uh, other countries now too, but especially in India. So, yeah. Okay, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, we, should, we, sh- we all should contribute any ways we possible. And for that, please make as much money as you could and then direct your resources to the right, for the right cause. Also share about this on your social media, on all the platforms, because you it's your job to also inspire people to do the right thing rather than keeping it to yourself. So thank you for Marichi and episode number 76. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So I'm curious, what would be uh, a next step for you in terms of your impact on humanity and uh, are, do you have plans to start a foundation do you have plans uh, or or ideas around some sort of big initiative uh, other than just uh, uh, making donations or perhaps uh, being on the board of nonprofits or are you uh, working on some big things yeah uh, so we are working on uh, launching a foundation i've asked my lawyer friend who's who's helping me with the all the setup part I have two other friends who will be helping with, you know, being being a part of this foundation. I'm not, uh, so we are still at this stage. We are prospecting. If you have any, you know, if you have anybody who can help us structure it or guide us at this stage, that would be amazing. Yeah. So, so I don't have anybody for India, but uh, I'm just starting this process myself and had an initial conversation with a lawyer who specializes in in, in founding. And, and structuring nonprofits, five hundred one c threes are what they're called over here in the U.S. Yep. So cool. Best of luck, and yeah, I'll constantly nudge you to get an update on this. I'm very <laughs> excited about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I'm I'm interested to hear more about the spiritual side of your life because you've integrated that so well into your business life. It um i i think this concept of work life balance is a, a fallacy it, you don't balance work on one side and then life on the other side of the scale 
life includes all these different facets and your your life's mission or career is only part of life you've got family you've got your intimate relationship your 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 partner you you have uh, hobbies and 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 interests you have your health you have your uh, your finances and so forth and so on so there's this kind of wheel of life and there there are many uh, slices to that pizza how do you balance or not balance but how how do you uh, maintain that in a in a way that feels really good okay so I think you're absolutely back on uh, the work-life balance I mean that is uh, that is that should not be there per se. It's not just work life. It's not two things. It's like life is actually full of a lot of spoke in a wheel. That's how the life is. That's how we should see that. Plus, we should stop rewarding people for overworking, which is what this the current culture is. That people who are working or who are growing at a great speed, but they don't have, you know, the work is the only thing for them. We reward them, and I think that mindset needs to be changed. Rather, we should reward people who are growing uh, in all the aspect of life, even if they are not growing, but they have a happy life, those are the real heroes uh, and th- those are the people who should be rewarded. Now, how I achieve it? So, uh, so I will get to the uh, spiritual part later, but before that, like there is this aspect called North Star document, and which is based on something called Traction, the book Traction. And this is something my good friend David Hensel introduced me to this. And this is something I've been doing from last, not many, I mean, it's not too old, but uh, what essentially is this, that we define our mission, vision, values, what are our goals for next 90 days or one year or next three years, and the wheel of life, which is uh, interestingly, you mentioned that. So we check our life current status based on the different parameter, like how good is your social life, how good is your uh, health, how good is your uh, financial status, your business, and different different you know aspect of it, and the spoke which is the list for the next 90 days for the next three months you mostly focus or include those activity which improves it. Or for a simple simple example like you know maybe your relationship with your wife or your partner is not great, so you can include something like date night with your partner and at least for the next 90 days that spoke will start improving, which will balance the entire wheel and your life will be a healthy and happy life, most likely. So this is one exercise that I keep doing every quarter and has helped immense, immensely. I could share the document with you as a show notes. You can, All of our listeners can use it. Awesome. Yeah, that would be fabulous. And uh, so there are two books titled Traction. One is... Uh, by Gina Wickman, who was a guest on my other podcast. Uh, he's the founder of Entrepreneurial Operating System, or EOS. And yeah, that's that, that that's that's him. That's the one. Okay, there's another traction book too, and that one is by the founder of the DuckDuckGo search engine. Kind of interesting. So, uh, yeah, that one is called. Um, traction: How any startup can achieve. Uh, explosive customer growth by Gabriel Weinberg. So that that's that's another traction book by uh, another smart guy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you were talking but... about traction by Gina Wickman. Yeah. True. Yeah. So I highly recommend our listener uh, who has a business listen to the Gina Wickman uh, episode on get yourself optimized, even if they don't have a business yet. Even if you, as a listener, don't have a business yet, but you have aspirations to start a business, to be an entrepreneur, that is an episode definitely worth listening to. And you mentioned David Hensel, a mutual friend, because uh, he's such an awesome guy. And, of course, he was a guest on my other podcast, too. Uh, we talked about how to get unstuck and um, how to how to set uh goals and and have a north star and it was it was really insightful episode he has a a course or program called managing happiness have you tried have you taken that uh, that program with him i 
I speak to him. I spend time with him in in his house. So I think we spend we keep talking about the entire course in person. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, well. <laughs> so I'm quite fortunate that that was here. Yeah. So I I took it. It was fabulous. And and uh, listener David Hensel is a quite a successful business person, founder of Max CDN, Task Drive, UpCoach, a lot of really great businesses. Um, yeah, he had a successful exit from Max CDN uh, years ago, and uh, that uh, I forget who acquired that, but that was that was a pretty big business in in the t- in the day, and uh, then it got absorbed by one of the competitors when it got acquired. So, all right, well, how do you increase the amount of content and the reach and all this without adding more hours to your day? Do you have a team assisting you? Are you the only content creator at Shout Me Loud or, or do you uh, distribute this work? Okay, uh, so just to get get on the same page, I have two businesses now. One is Shout Me Loud, one is Coin Sutra. Uh, we have a team of five people um, and I do work with freelancer, but again, as I said, like the, the magic for us is to f- identify the content which has not been created before. And that's where we get the edge. So even we publish four to five content, our content, four to five content a month, which is not recommended. Uh, and in fact, the recommendation is to publish more high quality content, which is good for business. But for us, it works because of the high authority or and that's that's what been our process is right so which business of the two shout me loud and coin sutra are uh which is the one that is the the bigger focus for you these days coin sutra coin sutra Both, both of them both of them are there but coin sutra is at a very critical stage of its career uh the blockchain and the cryptocurrency industry is booming and with our all of our you know core values we think we can bring the kind of uh, discipline which is required in the term of crypto investing which is not out there which is a real pain among investor and that transparency that we bring to the on the plate is something a lot of individual around the globe can utilize mm-hmm. include including our experience to make that life changing money so this is yeah. what we are offering with coin sutra yeah awesome and do you associate your name with the Coin Sutra brand? If I went to the About page, would I see information about you as the founder, or do you kind of stay on the on the DL to not I don't know get targeted by hackers who are trying to go after uh, large uh, Bitcoin holders? Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, I'm not a large Bitcoin holder. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I like the tech part. I saw cryptocurrency, blockchain, and the usage back in 2015, and that, that was I was quite late compared to a lot of other friends or common friends that we we may have. Uh, but yeah, you would see my name everywhere. I take full ownership of the content, the quality, and everything goes there. I have had friends who had great success reading coin sutra and you know getting into crypto investment so yeah i mean those are, i create content for people i know and that's what that's what the real usp is like if i can't change the life of people around me how can i change the life of a stranger who is whom i don't even know you know so that makes a lot of difference for when i pub, when i hit the publish button or before i hit the publish button I always ensure that whatever i'm publishing it is of high quality nobody should lose money because of this and it should add value to the people life so that and i don't have any problem putting my name out there then yeah so give give, give us an example of a friend who's had an amazing uh, outcome because they followed the advice on coin sutra and of course anonymize so, the person so that uh, <laughs> they don't get targeted definitely i think it was uh, 2017 some august september a friend of mine I had some amount to an investment and I was he was he came to me he was like Harsh I want to invest in this and I was like okay I'll suggest you something but before that you need to read and because you know being an investor you need to be an aware aware investor otherwise the point of investing is never there you are either just a dumb investor or that you are an investor who knows where in, in which in what you are investing so I spent time reading and learning about blockchain, the decentralization, and Bitcoin. 
and then uh, and back then it was not easy to you know get into the cryptocurrency wagon even in 2016 17 and i think this was 2017 so yeah he invested uh, that time and i think that time bitcoin was some 1500 dollars or something and yeah he still thanked me he still th- send me thank you message and notes sometime for helping him invest in that and that has changed his life for good no oh, that's awesome that's really cool very very awesome so what are you doing as far as your spiritual practices that help you to be the best person best soul you can possibly be cuz you, you you have the potential to work infinite number of hours per day you have more ideas than you have time in the day to implement them so there's something that you do to keep you grounded and and also seeing the bigger picture so tell us about that yeah uh so i think my i believe my journey a lot of this has been contributed lately by this meditation practice called vipassana something i was very fortunate to get to be introduced by something called kora i read it uh, you know so I, I, i'll i'll just take 2 minutes to like share a story before that so you know i'm i'm the kind of i was the kind of guy who never believed in the spirituality i always thought like you know it's just one one way or other way of making money i was very ignorant or i was i was more of a guy who would like rather go to a pub and party and chill than spend time reading this literature you know uh, but i think it was 2015 or 16 sometime when i was at the point of my life where i had everything but what i did not had was happiness and i was feel always felt like you know something is missing in my life i don't know what was it and i met this friend of mine uh, archana from and she is from uh, toronto no not sorry not toronto she's from somewhere in us i'm sorry i'm missing the name right name of the state right now but uh, she was in mumbai and i met her at a conference and i saw her and there was like something very amazing about her her aura or her presence was quite uplifting and you know i i felt some kind of happiness uh, when when i talked to her and she mentioned that like her husband desh who runs this blog called drishtikon uh, is a you know is a big follower of shout me loud and his blog is about spirituality so like you know we we exchanged our contact and i went back to my room and i was supposed to go for a party you know i don't know all of a sudden i opened his blog just to out of curiosity about the spirituality and he had a lot of content which was backed up by science you know i thought like spirituality is only something which is like completely away from science but his content was full of you know uh, scientific backing of benefits of spiritual practices for the next 6 months i keep reading and i learn i read like i don't know maybe 10 book the power of now uh uh the surrender exp- experience and what not uh surrender experiment of, yeah the surrender experiment yeah uh, the autobiography of yogi and i wow. keep reading and lot of them talked about the magical experience of spirituality and what not you know mm-hmm. and i was like okay you know here's here's one thing which i know uh people might be sharing their experience in any way but there was one thing which was very common in all that all the books was that you have to meditate if you're not meditating you may or may not uh, reach that ultimate stage of happiness or calmness and then i got to know about uh, vipassana experience uh i simply signed up for this experience which is of 10 day in house uh, uh meditation experience where once we go there we submit our phone we uh we maintain noble silence that means we don't speak we don't speak uh engage with anybody else with our eyes basically we don't disturb anybody else so that we can continue looking inwards the practice starts at morning 4:30 and we practice for 10 hours a day for the next 9 9 and a half day and i've been doing this from and when i did it it started changing my life you know I, again it took me a lot of time to like integrate myself with this practice uh, i did my last practice 2 months back again uh, so i've started going every year for 10 days i go practice this and uh, and i practice this day and night one hour in the morning one hour in the evening at least i try to um, and yeah so i'm just sharing my experience i'm i don't know if i'm qualified to share all this thing because i'm just a student and there are more people who are who have spent countless hours doing this but 
from my experience what i could share is this is the most uh, if you ever want to learn meditation you know there are multiple form uh, multiple ways to learn meditation i found vipassana to be really a natural way of learning meditation because you start by focusing on your breathing for and improving your focus and then you start by focusing the sensation of your body and you realize the most basic nature of the entire uh, existence that is law of impermanence anicca that's the pali word of it once you realize that all the thoughts or everything that we are experiencing would eventually change the way you react to the certain situation instead of reacting you would start responding and it's a slow process it's yeah. not a it's not it's not a one day thing and Yeah. Do, do you want to add something here? Because I'm pretty sure you must have spoken oh, to yeah, yeah. many I, people around it. Well, the, the uh, one of the benefits of something like this is you gain awareness of your awareness, which is very meta. So when you are aware that you are aware, it's other level. It gives you this perspective of uh, uh, that, that there's a bigger picture. You may not be able to grasp the bigger picture, but you can glimpse it. And also, another way to think about this is praying is talking to God, but meditating is listening. And a good conversationalist does both. Actually, more listening than talking. And uh, a lot of people out there are only praying and not listening. And it's amazing what you can hear if you take the time to listen. really cool yeah 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 good conversationist okay that's that's amazing yeah and another thing i'll i'll mention to you you gave some great recommendations of books that uh you've read i'm curious if you've read any of dr joe dispenza's work he, he's the author of becoming supernatural of breaking the habit of being yourself phenomenal phenomenal guy uh and he's he's a very grounded scientist but very spiritual very metaphysical at the same time and he brings those uh two seemingly very disparate uh aspects of life together in a, a very cohesive and uh, integrated way not yet but yeah now it's it's going to my to read, to read list <laughs> yeah yeah and he does these these uh, programs that are week long intensives they sell out in 20 minutes <laughs> it's it's crazy mm-hmm. there's so many uh there are so many people who try to get in uh he does them i think once a month in different parts of the world i think that would be uh pretty incredible for you to a- attend if you're interested yeah sure all is open for new and exciting experiences that's what life is about yeah Awesome. And what do you tell somebody who's uh very skeptical about going through 10 days of not speaking <laughs> at all? Yeah, um so here's the thing, you can just tell them like you know, hey, you got to try it. If you and you will try when you're ready. Like somebody first told me about Vipassana back in 2010. I laughed on this idea. I was like, "Hey, <laughs> again who why would i do that like no tv no phone no that's not me and then after 6 year it happened you know so i think the best thing we can i mean i can do is like i can share all these experiences learning with others and it would happen when it has to happen for somebody that, i just believe that's how it works yeah yeah uh this true the timing is always divine and um one thing i'll mention too about dr joe dispenza i was listening to one of his monthly Q&A calls uh, a few weeks ago and uh, he was talking about some uh, scientific uh, principles and studies and so forth and and one thing I I remember him talking about how human thought changed the outcome of a random number generator slightly but it was measurable it was statistically significant and it was reproducible which is phenomenal like that's how powerful so, we are we can change you, reality you need to repeat that again how human thought worked so a random number generator on a computer is supposedly uh, random right but human thought can influence 
that random number generator. They did scientific studies, peer-reviewed scientific studies, and showed that it was statistically significant. If you tried to focus on changing the numbers of the random number generator algorithm, it would change the numbers. Crazy. I mean, it sounds very unbelievable. And yeah, I'll definitely check it out, Dr. Joe. Joe Dispenza. Yeah, Joe, Joe Dispenza. And, and how, how was your reaction when you heard this for the first time? It makes total sense because I'm, I've been experiencing it for the last seven and a half months. Yeah, eight months. Yeah, what what happened for me, and I, I don't know that I really share this on this podcast. I've gone into this at some length on my other show on, on Get Yourself Optimized. There's been a whole slew of, of spirituality-focused episodes over there uh, since January because I had a big uh, spiritual awakening. Uh, I had my first spiritual awakening in 2012 in India in Udayapur. Uh, I got touched on the head by a, a, a oneness monk. And uh, that awakened me, and it was like an LSD trip. Everything was in Technicolor, and, and uh, that was incredible. But this was like a second level of spiritual awakening that happened on January 22nd. I prayed to God for a job. The reason I asked for a job, I have a job, I have a business, but I asked for a job because I, in preparation for an interview back in November on Get Yourself Optimized, I did some research on this um, amazing psychic medium, Sheila Gillette, and she talked about her near-death experience back in 1969. And she was on her way out, no doubt about it. She wasn't going to make it. And she prayed to God, please let me raise my kids. Let me uh, stay on this planet. Uh, please give me a job. I'll, I'll do anything. Just give me a job. And uh, yeah, this... It, 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 a miraculous healing happened overnight, and um, she had, uh, uh, for her, it was Jesus, so it was the divine showing up at her bedside, and all this uh, beautiful energy flowing into the top of her head, into her crown chakra, and next thing you know, she becomes psychic, and uh, of course, she, went, she, she was healed that night doctors uh, couldn't believe it that was 50 years ago and her whole life is completely different now because of that experience she uh, channels on a on a daily basis um, she channels 12 archangels she's the real deal and i interviewed her back in november but that thing of her praying for a job just stuck with me and so i i prayed for a job it took me a few months, but I'm like, I want that. And I don't want to have a near-death experience uh, to want it. I, w I want it now without uh, without the NDE to go with it. And it was it was instant. It was instant. It was, uh, it was like the veil was lifted. The matrix was revealed instantly. It, it, it's been an incredible. It's changed everything in my life. And that was, uh, uh, yeah, eight months ago. It's something you would know and you know, Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, didn't mean to go off on that tangent, but uh, thank you for asking. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it's fun. Uh, I believe I, I know how passionate you are when you shared your first time experience of initiation in Udaipur with me when you were telling me about this. And I could see the same now. So, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. So um, I know we're, we're out of time, but if you had a resource or a tool or a tip or some uh, last nugget of wisdom to share with our listener viewer, what would it be? Okay. Uh, so first, a tool or resource that I'm building. It's called vip.coinsutra.com. It's a place for the people who are looking to grow in the field of cryptocurrency. Again, it's managed by me and my team. So, and the idea is to build a community of like-minded people who understand that, you know, this part of investment can do really wonder. It's, you do you do everything of your own. It's just a learning platform where people grow of their own. So again, uh, if you're if you one of those who are interested in uh, 
you know, growing in the cryptocurrency space, want to learn and share, grow at the same time with other people, you're more than welcome to join us at vip.coinsutra.com. Second, uh, I know that last one or two years has been very hard for a lot of people. Uh, and I think meditation is the right way forward uh, at this moment, something that you can integrate into your life. If you want to try Vipassana, you can go to dhamma.org and find a center next to your country, uh, city, wherever you live in. It's available everywhere, including US, New Zealand, UK. Uh, the best part, everything is completely free. Um, and I'm recommending it based on my experience after trying it out for four times. If you would have asked me uh, after my first experience, I might not have said the same thing. But as I'm maturing in this field, I could tell you uh, it could make a real difference into your life and the life of people around you. So, yeah, there you go. Awesome. Well, those are great uh, recommendations. And uh, uh, vip.coinsutra.com, is that a, a membership site or a uh, um, what, 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 what exactly is that program? So uh, we are adding four value proposition and it's at a very nascent stage. The very first, uh, we are we have a lot of courses. The first one, which is called grid bot trading, where basically bots would trade on your behalf. You just need to fit in an instrument and it, it, the complete strategy is shown how you can do that. Uh, then you we have a Discord community group where people can join and interact with other member of the community. Of course, completely anonymous if you want to be or you can use any name or any image you want, but it's an invite based. Third, we are creating something called Coin Sutra Picks where we'll be sh we are sharing what are, whatever investment that we have made for ourselves, including me, my team, so that people can do their own research and they can invest. Uh, and then we are experimenting with one or two things, for example, monthly research report where we share re research report of a particular project that we are very excited about. We share what are the good and bad of this project and what do we think from the investment perspective with all the essential disclaimer, which is very important. And yeah, uh, and again, we are building. So, you know, uh, we, anybody who has an idea, feel free to join and share their ideas with us. Um, ho hopefully, you know, we'll build something that world has never seen. Amazing. Well, Good luck with that. It sounds like you're adding uh, so much value out in the world, revealing a lot of light, and uh, keep up the great work. Thank you, man. Thank you, my friend. It's always a pleasure meeting you, chatting with you. Yeah, likewise. And, and listener, it's a pleasure having you on this journey with me, and thank you for listening to this a uh, little bit out of the box episode for marketing speak but i think it has incredible gifts and lessons for you if you especially if you implement so catch you on the next episode this is your host stefan spencer signing off